to Ms. Vasquez is exactly where it says that. That's abuse, it's sexual abuse. But we all know what Mr. Depp does when he experiences terrible financial news, or terrible news. He experienced terrible news that night on the way to the birthday party where his, both of his bodyguards have testified that he was either visiting his sick mom or getting a birthday present for Amber. And then we know what happens the day after his mother passed away on May 21st, 2016. And we're gonna skip through a little bit of this now. And Elaine will talk about this in the context of the counterclaim. But these are the pictures afterwards. These are pictures that now they're claiming that, oh, they must have been faked. There's been no testimony in this case that these pictures were faked. There's been no testimony that the marks you see on Amber's face, including this mark with a straight line from below her eye to the top of her temple that it lines up directly with a phone. There's been no testimony that those are faked. Mr. Depp went through the house. He destroyed pictures of her friends. That's abuse. Property destruction like that it, in and of itself is abuse. He destroyed her office. He destroyed her friend Rocky Pennington's uh, preparation for the bead show that she was having. He spilled wine in the hallway that you'll notice the police denied. Oh, there was no spilled wine in the hallway. Well, even Isaac Baruch testified that he saw this in the hallway. And they said she never sent anything to her medical providers. These are the texts that she sent to her nurse, Erin Filati, the night that it happened. These are pictures of her in the courtroom. We're not going to play this right now, but you can listen to this. This is that terribly disturbing text of him in July of 2016 threatening to cut himself and telling, you cut me or I will. You all remember playing that. It was awful. It was awful. And I'm not going to play it again. But it was, it, was, it was horrible. That in and of itself is abusive. This is the document that Mr. Depp signed, the divorce agreement, where he says, signed in agreement with his signature, neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. He said that then. He could have fought this then, but he didn't because he knew that her allegations were true. But then he continued his campaign of humiliation. He says, I want her replaced on that WB film. Ladies and gentlemen, the facts are absolutely overwhelming of abuse. One time, that's all you have to remember. Mr. Depp simply cannot prove to you that he never once abused Amber. And if you don't, no, you have to return a verdict for Ms. Heard. A ruling against Amber here sends a message that no matter what you do as an abuse victim, you always have to do more. No matter what you document, you always have to document more. No matter whom you tell, you always have to tell more people. No matter how honest you are about your own imperfections and your own shortcomings in a relationship, you need to be perfect in order for people to believe you. Don't send that message. That's what he wants you to send. So I'm gonna quickly get to another point that you have to find in order to prove or in order to rule for Mr. Depp. You would have to find that Ms. Heard made the statements with actual malice. Now what Mr. Chu didn't tell you is that you have to find this by clear and convincing evidence. So this is much higher than the greater weight of the evidence standard that applies to the other claims, uh, the other elements of the claim. Clear and convincing evidence is evidence that creates in your minds a firm belief or conviction that Mr. Depp has proved this issue. So if you believe that Ms. Heard did not act maliciously in writing her op-ed, then you must return a verdict or misheard, even if you think that he never abused her. But we can, I'll quickly go over the evidence of this. The, the, the op-ed, you look at the words, it clearly wasn't a hit piece. She visited her attorney, Eric George, who testified by video that his objective was to make sure that there could be no meritorious claim that could be brought about this article relating to defamation. He gave Ms. Heard advice. She affirmatively followed all of it. So you cannot find that Ms. Heard met the clear and convincing evidence standard, given the testimony of Eric George, given the testimony of Terrence Doherty from the ACLU, when Amber went out of her way to ask her lawyer if it was okay. They will say it doesn't matter if she's lying, but even if that isn't, um, they will say that that doesn't matter if she's lying, but even that isn't true. Because again, keep in mind that if Ms. Heard wanted to be malicious toward Mr. Depp, the article would be very different. And I think it's interesting here, we'll talk about Mr. Waldman in a second, but that Amber utilized her attorney, Eric George, to make sure that she was following the law. Mr. Depp used his attorney, Adam Waldman, as an attack dog to defame Amber and to fulfill Depp's promise to her of global humiliation. The last thing I'll touch on before Elaine talks is Mr. Depp's damages. 
The man's at least consistent in one respect. He blames other people for his problems. Everyone but himself. You heard us reading the stack of articles dating years before he broke up with Amber, uh, before their marriage broke apart, talking about his problems, talking about the fact that his movies were flops, talking about the fact that he was late to the set, he's unreliable as an actor. A word of reminder here, ladies and gentlemen, is that the only thing Amber ever did that Mr. Depp is allowed to sue her for is the op-ed. He's trying to say, I want to sue her for what she said in 2016. I want to sue her for harm that was caused then. You cannot do that. The only thing you're being asked to decide is are the words of the op-ed defamatory. Nothing else. Any damage to Mr. Depp's career is self-caused. Then think about the testimony that you've heard from his former business manager, Joel Mandel, said that Depp had issues with drugs and alcohol that damaged his career. Depp sued him. His former agent, Tracy Jacobs, said he was late to the set and that he used an earpiece. Depp fired her. She said Disney never committed to Pirate 6. Disney's corporate representative, Tina Newman, said that there was no record in Disney's records of this op-ed. This op-ed had nothing to do with it. In fact, Catherine Arnold, our damages expert, testified that the paper version of the article that allegedly they say came out four days after the op-ed was published the same day as the op-ed. It said that Johnny might not be in Pirate 6. The same day, the paper article came out the same day. So the op-ed didn't cause that. There's no evidence of any contract by Disney for Pirate 6. His agent, Jack Wiggum, couldn't identify a contract. His former agent, Christian Carino, said that there's no contract. He didn't lose anything as a result of this op-ed. Anything he's lost is the result of his own choices. You also heard him lie to you. You heard him tell you that this was his first chance to tell his story. But let's break it down, because that's not true. He could have fought the TRO that Amber filed. He could have said, I didn't abuse her, but he chose not to do that. He could have fought her in the divorce case, but he chose not to do that. Instead, he signed the statement saying that no one had falsified any statements. He only filed this suit after he met Adam Waldman, the same Adam Waldman who convinced him to file suit against his former business manager, to file suit against his law firm and fire them and blame them for things. But by the time that Amber wrote the op-ed, Mr. Depp already had had another opportunity to tell his story. He filed a case in the UK against the son for calling him a wife beater. And in that case, he had many of the same witnesses. He was on the stand for parts of five days. And he got to tell the fact finder in the UK whatever he wanted. Now, it's not the same testimony he told here, because you heard me impeach him about 13 times with this testimony from the UK but he's had his chances. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to tell Mr. Depp that this was his last chance. Tell him to move on with his life. Tell him to let Amber move on with hers. Stand up for the freedom of speech. Stand up for the First Amendment. This trial is about so much more than Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. It's about the freedom of speech. Stand up for it, protect it, and reject Mr. Depp's claims against Amber. And now you'll hear from Ms. Beretta Hoff uh, about the counterclaim. Thank you.